you're receiving this message because we are very concerned here at Visionary about many of the changes that are coming in the Medicare air arena over the course of the next one to three years. And we have a strategic partner, Jason Lamadou from Nexus Insurance Solutions, where they specialize in supporting and caring for families who are making Medicare decisions. And because of the significant changes, we want to be very intentional at putting additional information in front of you prior to and during open enrollment this year and next year. So I'm going to have a, a bit of a conversation today with Jason. We also have shot a podcast. We also shot a webinar a year ago that we will be sending out to you again. If you are 64 years of, of age or older, we need you to sp spend some time educating yourself and perhaps reaching out to Jason and his team to get the right decisions for you and your family made around Medicare or A, B, D, and all the word salad that comes thereafter. So uh, I'm here with Jason. Jason, thanks for being here and spending a few minutes with us. Yeah, Wayne, thank you for having me here. Jason, Medicare is always, has always been a complex arena. People are left to their own devices to try to educate themselves find partners that can help figure out what's right for them and their families. We want to be providing uh, more input, especially with some of the changes that are coming up. And I know that the changes that are coming up, we don't even know what the changes are yet in many cases. We just know that change is coming mm -hmm. and more change is coming. And they'll let us know what the changes are when we get there that we need to realize the change. <laughs> so can you give us just a couple of quick run-throughs? We don't need to go through all of the the, the gobbledygook of the A, B, D, X, Y, Z, P, D, Q. I, I, and literally every time you talk, it seems like there's a new letter to the alphabet yeah. <laughs> that, that I need to learn, know something about when it comes to Medicare, which is why you're the expert and I, I don't claim to be the expert. Mm -hmm. um, but can you talk to us just a, for a, a minute or two about some of the changes that are on deck that we know these areas and maybe some of the unknowns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so a big part of this was in 2022 with the Inflation Reduction Act that uh, that um, Biden signed into law. Um, so there's a lot of changes. Some of them are coming into effect in 2025, some in 2026 and you know years after that. Um, the, the changes that we see coming up in 2025 um, one of them would be the the two thousand dollar max cap on drug plan spending that we discussed. So you know before with Medicare Medicare beneficiaries and Medicare Part D, there was four different stages of drug coverage. So there was your deductible where you're paying everything. Then you get into the initial coverage where you're you're paying copays when you go pick up your medications. Then once you have spent a certain amount, then you get into the coverage gap that used to be called the donut hole. Um, in there, you are spending about 25% of the retail cost of your medications. And then once you spend a certain amount, then you get into catastrophic coverage where you don't pay anything else. Um, now, next year, what's going to happen is they've eliminated the donut hole, which is huge. I think it's a big win for beneficiaries. Yeah. And so now the way it's going to work is there's going to be a deductible. Um, so the standard deductible next year is $590. Then once you satisfy the deductible, then you get into the coverage phase. And once you're in the coverage phase, you're paying deductible, or I'm sorry, you're paying co-pays. And then once you hit the $2,000 max out of pocket, you don't pay anything else for the remainder of the year. Okay. So there's a lot of folks who, you know, have spent thousands, you know, people, I have some clients who are taking 12 to 15 to 20 different medications. Um, you know, and those folks, I mean, you know, up until last year, there was no cap at all. Next year with a $2,000 cap, I mean, that's going to be great for those beneficiaries. Yeah. It sounds, it sounds like there's some, some great benefit, um, beneficial things for beneficiaries. Yeah. <laughs> um, the $2,000 out-of-pocket cap. I, I also recall that you said that people are going to be able to, rather than funding that out of pocket up front in the year, they're going to be able to budget or spread that out over the course of the year? Correct. Correct. So this is a brand new program and we don't know completely how it works right now, but there's going to be a, what's called the Medicare Part D prescription payment plan, okay. where instead of beneficiaries, you know, paying out of pocket that, you know, so the, the $2,000 max, if the insurance company realizes that, you know, they're going to hit this in the first month or two, 
um, they're going to have the opportunity to spread out the payments evenly throughout the year. Okay. Um, now, there's some we don't understand, and I don't think probably CMS, who regulates Medicare, understands how it's all going to work. You know, if somebody was with carrier A for part of the year and then they switch to carrier B, you know, what implications are going to be there? Right. You know, so there's a lot that's still kind of up in the air that hasn't been clarified. Right. Um, but yeah, so that's another thing that's going to be great for Medicare beneficiaries. And, and I should say, because I, I think there's some confusion with this, that, you know, it, it's not going to lower the cost overall of medications, but it's going to be able, you know, you're going to be able to spread out the cost throughout the year rather than having to pay everything uh, front loaded, you know, at one time. Right. For people who are on a fixed income, mm -hmm. even if even if you drop the maximum amount of out of pocket from 8000 to 2000, the fact of the matter is that 2000 could all hit in January, February, March, and mm -hmm. it could be budget breaking or have to make, you know, may not be able to put heating oil in your house mm -hmm. in February because you're paying that $2,000 mm -hmm. out of pocket. So, mm -hmm. um, so that, right after that's, Christmas and <laughs> right, right. So, you know, it's the worst time of year to have to do that. Yeah. So well, that that's really helpful. Um, now, insurance companies being faced with dropping those caps all the way down to 2000, mm -hmm. I, I would anticipate that the government is, uh, um, will affectionately just say they're going to print the money to fill the gap for at, at some point here, but these insurance companies are ha having to scramble to figure out how to um, change their benefit plans. Is that, is that, are we anticipating significant changes to things like formularies, mm -hmm. number of choices in a, d a drug category, things like that? that Correct. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, some things, so from a theoretical stand, not theoretical, what's the word I'd want to use? Um, you know, some things that we're projecting, for example, and we don't know for sure, would be the insurance carriers will probably limit the amount of prescriptions, uh, the, you know, limit the drugs on the formulary okay. that they're covering. Um, one thing that definitely has started happening, there are some insurance carriers that have pulled out of the market completely. Right. Um, they've decided that they don't want to take on that $2,000 cap and what that means for them. So they've they've just decided they're not going to be in the Medicare space. Right. So we've seen that. Um, one of the major carriers just recently, it, they had three prescription drug plans nationwide that they've recently pulled two of them. And now they're only going to have one drug plan nationwide. Mm. Um, so there's there's been a lot of a lot of that, a lot of unintended consequences where unfortunately, you know, they're taking there's not going to be as many choices for the beneficiaries right. in 2025. Yeah, and it, it seems like the government, uh, <laughs> many of you listening will will know my, some of my own uh, pr predilections on the feeling of government overreach. But yeah. <laughs> uh, the fact of the matter is, every time the government touches one thing, there's a, a whole bunch of unintended consequences mm -hmm. where they, they impact other areas and other, other points in, in people's lives. Mm -hmm. So it that can't help but happen here. Mm -hmm. It is also... Uh, par for the course that one president signs things into law that don't actually become law until after he's out of the office. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll welcome Joe back to Delaware when he gets here. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the fact of the matter is he, he won't have to live with the consequences of what he signed into law in 2022. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, let's move on. So um, any, any other areas that we're seeing major impact or changes that we're anticipating or things that we know about or don't know about yet? So uh, another one would be that, um, so the, Medicare is constantly trying to negotiate drug, uh, drug pricing with the manufacturers. Mm -hmm. And so I know that they had just released a list of 10 medications that they negotiated the price on where I believe that won't come into effect in 2026. Well, and, and ultimately, Medicare is supposed to use kind of the law of large numbers to be able to compete for better pricing. Um, but at the end of the day, when the government makes a pushes through a, a wholesale mandate, hey, we're going to take that maximum out of pocket from 8000 to 2000 and the insurance companies have to figure out the microeconomics of how individual beneficiaries, because individual beneficiaries might have only somebody may have only been able to afford three or four thousand dollars so they simply weren't taking or weren't filling the prescription mm -hmm. right sure. and so 
you're mm -hmm. that now you're in a situation where oh i'm only going to be out of pocket two thousand dollars i'll make sure i get every prescription filled and the insurance company now has to pay for the yeah. difference <laughs> yeah. on that and have unlimited out of pocket to mm -hmm. pay for all those those medications mm -hmm. and so you get better compliance and hopefully better outcomes so hopefully you get uh patients who live longer with better quality of life because they're being more compliant with what their doctor's instructions are and the drugs that they're taking. Mm -hmm. But the outside of that is the insurance industry has got to figure out how to cover that incremental cost that they're being required to cover. Mm -hmm. And there's implications to that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and then some, some poor actuary is toiling them out in a coal mine with a spreadsheet somewhere trying to figure <laughs> out the microeconomics on how individual beneficiaries are making decisions in their own home relative to these reduced out-of-pocket costs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Jason, one of the things we really appreciate about having our clients work with you is that there's there's no additional cost. So patients, clients, beneficiaries, folks who are 64 years of age, approaching 65 and older, they have to make these decisions. Mm -hmm. And they're either making these decisions with advice from YouTube and Google. And their neighbors. Or, and their neighbors yeah. or family <laughs> members. Or my parents come to me and ask me, and, I'm, and I glaze over because I have no idea about mm -hmm. this stuff. I know that I've referred my own parents to you to, to, to take care of them. And, and they're, they've been really happy with the service they've gotten. But there's no, and this is kind of a sales pitch for Nexus, Medicare, Nexus. So. Insurance advisors. Yeah. <laughs> this is a little bit of a sales pitch for Nexus insurance advisors, but there's no incremental cost for people to call Jason Lamadou and your team and have a conversation because whether they go direct to the company or whether they go through you, they're getting the same cost for the product. Is that correct? That is correct. That is correct. So we don't charge any fees. Um, so working with us is always free. Um, or maybe I should say working with us, there's, there's never any cost to the client. So we get compensated by the insurance carriers and, you know, the, the plans are the same, whether or not you go through us, whether you use a broker, or if you go directly to the insurance carrier, mm -hmm. you know, the, the plan G from one company is going to be the same, you know, if you go through the carrier as it is, if you use us. Right. So I'm reminded of an old story of a guy who made his, uh, he made his living, uh, David digging septic systems. And uh, I went to his house probably 15 or 20 times as a young advisor. And uh, finally he called me and I thought he, I was sure he was going to call me and say, Hey, just stop bothering me. But he called me and said, Wayne, bring the paperwork tonight. You can have my money. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. So I was smart enough not to ask what made the decision until after he signed all the paperwork. But once he signed all the paperwork, I did ask him, Hey, why now? And he said, well, I drove by your house. And uh, I know where to find you <laughs> and you take care of your money or I'm going to take care of you. There you, you go. <laughs> know, I made, I made my money digging holes that nobody ever digs up again. Right. <laughs> so in some sense, every Medicare beneficiary, everybody who's going to have Medicare word salad, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, mm -hmm. they're either going to be calling an 800 number mm -hmm. and working with somebody some faceless person to get service from the company mm -hmm. or they can come find Jason Lamadou because they know where you are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yell at you when they're not happy about something. Yeah. <laughs> so, and meanwhile, you're providing the guidance and wisdom along the way mm -hmm. to guide them to the right decision for their family, knowing that that right decision for their family may well shift over time mm -hmm. because as this marketplace changes, as the companies come into the marketplace and leave the marketplace, things are the sands are always going to be shifting. The gravitational forces are always going to be being pulled in one uh, direction or another. And Nexus Insurance Advisors is there to help people make these decisions. And again, at no incremental cost to the client. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Wayne, as, as you know, I mean, so when when people are going to turn sixty five, you know, they get this thirty a hundred and thirty five page book from the federal government called Medicare and You. Yeah. And basically they say, here you go. You know, th this is the only resource you're getting, right? So they say, here you go. Um, you know, th and they expect you to make the decisions based on that. And if you do it wrong, then you get penalties forever. Right. So right. it is very important to have that, that trusted person, that advisor, that guide to help walk, you know, someone through those processes. You know, as we've talked about, there are some of the Medicare plans that, you know, if you 
choose to enroll in one of these plans and then later on want to go to something else, you know, sometimes you're not able to because of underwriting and, you know, you have to qualify medically. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times the decision that you're making when you turn 65 is really the decision that you're going to have to stick with sometimes, you know, when you're 85, 95, you know, God willing, 105. <laughs> so, you know, and, and these are decisions that we help walk our clients through every day. Okay. Wayne, in terms of um, when someone needs to start having these conversations with someone, really, it would be probably about six months before the month they turn 65. Now, there is their Medicare open enrollment, which includes the month they turn 65, three months before they turn 65, then three months after. So it's they have a seven month period when they're turning 65 where they have to make some of these decisions. Right. So, you know, part of that would be, OK, I, you know, one of the first questions that we would look at is what is your current coverage? Does it make sense to enroll in Medicare right now? Do you have creditable coverage through an employer where, you know, where you could delay? Um, you know, what does that look like? Do you know, do you have a spouse that's on your policy, right? So if you have creditable coverage and you have a spouse who's on your plan, maybe it would make sense if it was just you as an individual to go to Medicare. But for the spouse, if they lose their coverage and they have to get an individual plan, mm -hmm. I mean, that that's a completely, you know, separate dynamic right. that we, you know, that we help walk people through. Okay. So I would say that would be on the enrollment side. In terms of the the medic the upcoming Medicare open enrollment, you know, for the average beneficiary, what is going to happen is, you know, probably early to mid September, they're going to receive their annual notice of change from their current insurance carrier. Now, this is not for Medicare supplements. This would be for anyone who has a separate Part D drug plan or a Medicare Advantage plan. They're going to be receiving the annual notice of change. And, you know, it's going to outline, it, it's actually very nice. There's going to be two columns and it's going to say this, this was your plan in 2024. In 2025, these are the changes that we're going to make. So I encourage everybody to look at the annual notice of change, you know, and I think this upcoming year, especially with the Medicare Advantage plans, I think there is going to be a lot of changes, especially in the ancillary benefits. So you know, the they could still, you know, things like dental coverage, vision coverage, hearing coverage, um, over the counter benefits. Some of them have, uh, you know, a benefit where they reduce the Part B premium. I think that this upcoming year, especially, it's going to be very important to review those and to compare and then to call, you know, a broker such as myself to compare, you know, and help them compare with other plans on the market. So Jason, you mentioned signing up prior to age 65 or the seven month window prior to the birth date and after the birth date, but it's not just 65, right? It's every year there's open enrollment decisions that need to be made and plan changes that occur, correct? Correct. So that's called the, the annual enrollment period. Okay. And that is every year from October 15th through December 7th. Okay. So in that time, the beneficiaries for Medicare Part D drug plans and Medicare Advantage plans they can make whatever changes they want to in that time. And then on December 7th at midnight, whatever plan they have at that point is the plan they have in 2025. Okay. So in some sense, Nexus operates a little bit like a CPA does around August 5th or April 15th in that window between October 15th and December 7th, where it's just everybody needs to have a conversation and at least review what they're doing during this period of time. Correct. So it is very important to, you know, sit down with someone during the annual enrollment period from October 15th through December 7th. Right. Thankfully, there is another time period as well, where if someone's in a Medicare Advantage plan and they unfortunately, for whatever reason, aren't able to make a decision, or if they do make a decision during open enrollment, and then they find that, you know, maybe their doctors are actually not in network, or maybe their medications aren't covered, something along those lines, Basically, they get buyer's remorse. They have what's called a Medicare Advantage open enrollment from January 1st to March 31st. Mm. And in there, they can make a one-time change from one Medicare Advantage plan to another. Okay. And that's for basically for everyone who has buyer's remorse for the plan that they enrolled in during open enrollment. Right. Well, Jason, thank you for being with us. If you are one of our clients, if you're somebody who's watching this and trying to figure this out for you, for your parents, uh, this is 
we have found Nexus and Jason's expertise to be invaluable for providing advice. Be real clear, there's no financial relationship between Nexus and Visionary. There's no financial relationship between Jason and myself. This is purely a value add a conversation that we want to be providing the best possible care for our clients and the folks that we're supporting. And when we talk about envisioning more, we, you need to envision more when it comes to Medicare planning. And Jason and his team at Nexus Insurance Advisors are the team to help.